So we're going to talk about nail surgery here, why you would need it, what is an ingrown toenail and everything to do with infected toenails. So if you don't like um, this sort of conversation, then get off this page. Uh, don't watch this video. So here we've got some examples of possibly what an ingrown toenail could look at. So we are based in Glasgow in Kinning Park. We are called the Rehab Hub. We are a team of healthcare professionals. We have a large rehab facility, um, podiatrists, uh, physiotherapists and Pilates rehab experts. So we are a multidisciplinary team working in Kinning Park and we also have a satellite clinic in the West End of Glasgow. Now, nail surgery is something that we do on a weekly basis. And we I just wanted to kind of debunk. So I'm Sarah Jane. I am one of the, the podiatrists at the uh, clinic. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about was some of the questions that patients will phone up and ask us or come in uh, about ingrown toenails. So this is a, a, actually these ones and these pictures here aren't really that bad. Some of the ones that we get that we see are really quite badly infected. Usually uh, they're, they're usually caused by maybe trauma to the nail or the, the the shape of your nail or been a footballer and kicked it particularly uh, or you've cut your nails too short or something something is such like that but you can see the the kind of granulation tissue here we've got a bit a little bit of localized infection a bit of red redness and swelling we've got a wee bit of tracking up in this one here you can see how it's swollen as well and red and a little bit of tracking so there's definitely infection in that one and um, here are some other examples now this one here this is where it's got the curve of the nail that's quite a common so you can see how the nail then grows in um this one here we've got um quite a, a a decent amount of infection there that definitely needs to come out and this one here you can see the infection and it's not unusual for pus and things to come out of these uh yellow green you name it and um, we've seen it all now usually what will happen you can see this one here in the right is quite a, a young person and what will happen with this, you'll usually, I mean, it's absolute agony. It really is so. You'll go along to uh, maybe your GP and they'll give you something like this. Antibiotics. Now, I'm not saying that antibiotics don't have their place. Um, we have antibiotics here that we will use if indicated. However, antibiotics, um, let's discuss, let's discuss why you would or would not need antibiotics. So you've got an ingrown toenail and the reason that you've got an ingrown toenail, and this is really important, is because you've got a big bit of nail stuck in and going through the skin. So let's imagine I stuck this knife into your arm. I basically stabbed you with this knife and I left it there, right? I left that knife there. Nobody took it out. The knife was still in. Think about what would happen. There'd be a portal of entry, bacteria would get in, we'd get infection. Then I said, okay, I'll give you some antibiotics to clear up that infection, but I'll leave the knife in. But here's some antibiotics. We'll leave that knife there though. Yes, the antibiotics would no doubt clear up the infection, but the problem, i.e. the knife, is still stuck in your arm. It's still there. We're not dealing with the problem if we just give you antibiotics. Does that make sense? That nail, this problem would still be there. This would just temporarily deal with the infection you'd be mucking up your whole flora you're taking antibiotics when you don't necessarily need to um it, it's not always necessary to take antibiotics and i can tell you for the vast majority of patients that come and see us we remove the nail and there is no requirement to take antibiotics because the body can then deal with that infection it themselves obviously if we needed antibiotics we have them there we would give you them but in most cases, you do not need antibiotics with this sort of problem. Right, there's a big needle in that picture. Nobody likes needles. So let's talk about the procedure and what options are and what happens because let's debunk some of this because it's not as scary as maybe you would think. So the first thing, yes, we have to anaesthetise your toe, right? We are not in the business of torturing you because we have to take out something that's stuck in and it's stuck in quite deep. And your nail actually, if I go back to one of these pictures, they go quite deep. So your nail, if I show you here. So 
what you can visibly see in your nail is is just a tiny fraction of what actually is in there. So it goes back into the matrix, probably about where I'm kind of round to your rounds here, and then all your nails will have a, a kind of winged bit. So they do go quite deep. So imagine us trying to pick that out without uh, anesthetizing you. That really would just be torture. Uh, you've got a lot of little nerve endings that feed into the big toe. So you've got one down the side, one down the other side, and then you've got your plantar ones as well. So they, it's quite a sensitive area. So we anesthetize it. Now, we use a tiny little needle. The needle gauges are really, really small. They're a similar size to the needle gauges that like, your dentist would use. So they're like usually around 30 gauge, which is really, really small. The higher the number, the smaller the needle. So it's not some big scary needle, but um, you do have to get a wee jag and you get two wee jags. You get one either side of your toe, one on the outside and one on the inside. And you need that because the nerves that innervate the toe um, are different branches. So we need to do two jags so that we knock out both branches and we make sure that you can't feel anything. So you're all numb. And then what we would then do, so let's go to this picture here, it's a wee bit nicer, is depending on your nail, right, we would either fully remove it. So a nail that looks something like this, let me show you, so let's talk about options. So if I had a nail like this, right, that was growing in like this, we need to consider whether or not there's enough nail to actually leave anything on the nail. Now, if we did what's called a partial, where we just took maybe from about here where my arrow is, and then you know, left it, left the rest of the nail on. The likelihood is is that that problem will return. So we could take it away, take that kind of whole corner away. We could then finalise it where we we basically burn off the nail cells so they don't grow back. And we'll talk about that fully in a second. But what will probably happen is that this problem would persist again. Something where you've got look at how small that nail is in comparison to how this one. So it's a, this one's a lot wider. This one's a lot narrower. So this sort of nail presentation, this person's nail, might not be a candidate for a partial. And you can see how that probably would be quite an invalided nail as well. It's quite curved, whereas this one's much more flatter. So would be a candidate for a partial. So these are the types of things we would discuss with you. It's always going to be your choice whether we do a full removal or a partial removal. But we will always explain the, the differences in your type of nail and your type of problem. Um, not that there isn't a one size fits all. And what I can say, um, having done hundreds of, the, uh, hundreds of these now, the ones that especially in the NHS when I've worked in there, when we have done this um, and we've done a partial, um, the, the ones that you see returning are, are always the partials. So it's definitely a consideration. But if you're very precious and you want your nail to, to, to grow back, then the, the, the option is there. So generally what will happen is we will put your toe to sleep and we will cut up. So you can see us get up there with um, a it's almost like a scissor and we cut that out and we go right up into the nail matrix and then this last area here we make sure there's nothing in so we kind of clear all this out make sure there's nothing digging in so get we get right in there and clear it all out and then this here is has got a solution on it a solution called phenol and phenol gets used where it, essentially we're using it to burn the, the nail cells. And why we do that is because we want to kill off those nail cells so that they don't grow back. We want to basically burn them so that that problem isn't going to come back. That's the idea behind that. And we can do that, as I said there, a partial. So I'll show you this picture a wee bit more um, indicative of actually what it actually looks like. And or we can do a full removal if that's something that's needed. A full removal, we can do, say, for example, you just had trauma. Say it was like you've kicked a football and you've damaged a toe and it's absolutely open and it's just been the trauma that's caused it. There's sometimes the case where we just remove the nail and we don't finalise it, so we allow it to grow back. And they, they kind of hope, I suppose, that it will grow back normally. And in many cases, it does. So actually, the, the next video I'm going to show you is one of my colleagues who I did hers and we didn't finalise hers and um, it's grown back lovely. Um, hers was, um, it was actually a fungal nail that we'd moved that was just completely destroyed and it was beyond repair. So we removed it, cleared it all out, treated it with um, antifungal and allowed the new fresh, lovely anti-fungus nail to grow back. 
So there's many indications for doing nail surgery, and that could be one of them as well. If it, if you had a big rotten fungal nail that just you couldn't clear up, um, then that is definitely an option. But we would normally finalise normally. Um, so yeah, that's where we would go from there, right? So if you're a wee bit squeamish, um, maybe check that you want to watch this. This is me actually removing the nail. So you see how wide that nail is. Look at that. I'm rotating that around. Look at how deep and wide that is. It really wings out um, a nail. So watch that again. Look, so that's me with the, the artery forceps. I probably need to go back to go forward. There we go. The artery forceps just in, got a hold of the nail and then taking that out. Look how wide it goes, right? So you can see how we need to anaesthetise that and we really need to get in there to get that out because it really goes into the sense. There's no way you would be able to do um, that without being anaesthetised or on your own. It's 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 That just would be barbaric. And that, not only the sides, but it goes quite deep up the top as well, um, up into the matrix where it primarily grows from, where your nail tissue primarily grows. So um, that's kind of what, it, what a partial would look like. So if we were going to um it's a bit funky isn't it so we get me to and on so the blood doesn't come through because um if we were going to finalize that and um, we don't want the blood diluting the phenol so that's what a partial kind of would look like we would then remove that we cut that off and we would then if we were going to finalize that we'd finalize it at that point and then we would clean it all out, get rid of any phenol that was there, and we would take the tourniquet off, clean it all up, and put a lovely um, primary and then secondary dressing on. So your toe would look like that when you were leaving. So you usually leave this bandage on for a couple of days, 48 hours, and then that's it. And then after that, you usually go to a plaster. So in here at the Rehab Hub, what we do with wound healing, we're quite lucky because we've got um, some great tech in here. And one of the things that we like to use for uh, wound healing is our laser. So we use the biostimulation setting on our medical grade four laser. So after we've done your surgery for you on that first day, we will use, we'll do, so before we um, put your dress in fully on, we'll do some laser on your wound to heal. And then with your package with us, you'll see us a further two times that's included in your package. So you come back usually a few days after um, and then you'll have taken your dressing off by then. We'll give you plasters, everything you need to put on it. So usually you'll have a bit of a, a kind of thick toe for a couple of days. You'll have this sort of bandage on and we ask you just basically to leave it alone. Don't do anything with it. Leave it alone. Don't do anything. Just try and shower, put a, you know, a bag around your, your foot, whatever. Uh, try not to get it away and leave it alone just for a couple of days. And then on the second day, we will usually say, go into the shower, get it soaking, soaking, soaking wet, just soaking wet, and then just let it slide off, let the bandage slide off, and then leave it alone, don't spray anything on it, just put a plaster on, that's it. There's no major, uh, you need to do this, or this cream, or uh, actually the more you leave it alone, the better. So you just pop a plaster on it after a couple of days, and then you'll usually be coming in to see us usually around that time. At that point, we will then remove the plaster. We will then do some laser on it. We will tidy up if we need to. So do any debriding, um, if any anything that needs done. And we will then obviously use the laser on it for um, wound healing. And then we'll pop another plaster back over it. And then you'll usually see us about a week later. You've just got a plaster on it again. So you can wear normal shoes. You get normal activity. It's really only 48 hours that you can like play, really go out and do anything too strenuous. Other than that, you pretty much can do what you like. And then from there, uh, you can back a week later and we do more laser on it for you and plaster. And that really is it. If there was any issues with infection, we would give you antibiotics. If that was indicated, it's, it's fairly unusual. But, you know, it is um, a wound on your toe. So, you, you know, bugs are everywhere. So, you know, there's always a risk of infection. But we would deal with that. That's why we like to see you back. Um, and we give you all the advice and all the bits that you need to manage um, your toe nail while it is recovering, while you're recovering. Um, it's not a big invasive surgery. You might think, oh my goodness, it sounds, oh, nail surgery. I think the word surgery really over-exit. It. It's not that bad. Um, 
if you are struggling with an ingrown toenail, there's also conservative treatments. If it's not too bad, we can conservatively treat. But if it's a persistent thing and it's something that is really affecting your life, just come in and get it done. Honestly, once it's, you'll be like, why did I not get that done years ago? Um, it really isn't a big deal. The number of people we get in that just say, oh, I've been frightened of this. I've been putting it off for years and really don't want to get it done. And um, they they literally leave going, I can't believe that was it, that I didn't really feel anything. Um, the, I mean, obviously, you feel a wee sharp scratch when you're getting your jag. That's about it, because everything, your, your toe's numb, and then it's not really sore afterwards. Um, so it's just, it's, it's a non, it's not a, a major a major thing. So sometimes we get these things in our head that it is. Um, the only thing I would say is, you know, if you're older, um, the, the main issue we have with patients is that a lot of the people that have maybe put it off for years and they've maybe leaving it until they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s. And as you get older, um, your peripheral vascular system isn't quite the same when you're 21. And that can be an issue because if you don't have a really good blood supply to your lower limb, then that would we, we wouldn't be able to do the surgery because... It, the likelihood is is that the wound might not heal as well as it might well it might not heal uh, because if the blood supply is not there or it's not great and um, things like diabetes as well so if you have um type 2 diabetes if your diabetes isn't controlled these are all factors that we need to consider and and, and take into account we have to weigh up the risks and the benefits of doing this surgery it's not that we wouldn't do it it's that it's it just totally depends on your um medical circumstances and so that my point of saying that is is don't leave it see if this is something see if just now you're in your 30s or 40s um and it's something that's really annoyed you most of your life then get it done sooner rather than later because as you get older that surgery might not be available to you it might not be an option and that's something we've had to have those difficult conversations with patients coming in in their 60s and it's just not been indicated. It's just, you know, their current health status uh, just doesn't allow for that surgery. So that's a consideration as well. Primarily, though, I have to say, the patients that, that get this done, usually, it's usually boys and it's usually teenagers. So that just gives you an idea. It, honestly, it's usually been something with teenage boys, they have picked at their toenails or something and they've left it and then it ends up a mess and then it just ends up a big mess. That's usually what we see. It's usually teenage boys um, or kind of lads in their, their 20s where they've had it from a kid and they've not, you know, they've kind of tried to conservatively manage it and it just always keeps going back and every so often, you know, they get it cleared up and maybe go into some antibiotics and then um, they just do this mad dance. They're just in and out is always something that's, that's there. So please just get it dealt with. Um, we generally, in terms of waiting lists, so NHS-wise, you will you will get this done in the NHS if it's bad enough. They will only do it if it's infected and if it essentially is bad enough. Uh, with In private practice, again, we don't want to be doing a surgery you don't need to do, but we've got a bit more leeway there. We don't have large waiting lists, so you can get this done pretty much within 24 hours if need be. Um, NHS wise, uh, I'm not sure what the waiting list is at the moment, but I know that um, it it will be fairly significant. So you could try it, your your local podiatry board, but you will be be waiting. Um, so if you are interested, if you want to come in and have a chat, please feel free to reach out. You can pop us either a you know a message wherever you're watching this video. Well, myself or Ashley usually pick that up, or you can phone us. The number's there and the um, the email address. So the email address is hello at the rehabhub.co.uk. For those that are maybe listening to this, the phone number is 07523147755. All right. Well, don't suffer with sore ingrown toenails. Come and see us at the Rehab Hub.